This video is sponsored by Wing. Hello, I'm Gav. Welcome to the Slow Mo Guys. You've joined me on an abandoned runway in the Californian wilderness. Today we're filming with a company called Wing, who specialize in drone delivery. And we'll be doing some lovely slow mo experiments of drones crashing, fighting the weather. Will the drones stay in the air? Who knows? Adam Savage from Tested is here. Can you believe it? Make sure you watch their video too. Wing is a highly automated drone delivery service who aims to increase access to goods, reduce traffic congestion in cities, and ease CO2 emissions. Before we got into the slow-mo experiments, I was able to have a little chat with the CEO, Adam Woodworth, just to get a bit of background on what I'd be seeing that day. Adam, one of a few Adams on the, on the set today. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me out to Wing. So this is your testing area in yep. California. This is, uh, this is our main test facility. It's really to sort of like stress test the aircraft um, to make sure everything works before they go out into the field. You know, we've done over 400,000 commercial deliveries over years. Like this is uh, a service that's been running for a while. And uh, you know, there are communities today that experience this every day. Well, I'm very excited to see them all in action. So what is the first thing we'll see them do? So at the beginning of every day before an airplane can go and get a, a delivery mission, so like before somebody can order something from it, they all go and do this sort of built-in test. If everything looks good, the plane, it'll say, I'm good to go accept flights. If not, it'll put itself into an automated hold and somebody will be dispatched to go check out what's up. So each drone is going through the process of taking off, we're attaching a package to it, and then it just goes up and I'm just getting about 2,000 frames a second of various parts of that. The first thing I noticed looking at this 2,000 frames a second footage is how fast the white propellers spin. They're actually at a higher RPM than I can even see at this frame rate. So I did also bring our faster Phantom. You'll see a lot of the packages are loaded by a person. If you think about integrating into a business, so like let's say we're working with a big retailer or working with a restaurant, they already have super optimized workflows. They might not have a spare person to go run outside and and wait for the airplane to show right. up and get that timing correct. And I guess the other way around, the drone can't necessarily just hang out for yeah. like 20 minutes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. waiting for like a, a every, guy. Every second that you're hovering is like yeah. many hundreds of meters that you could be flying. We had to come up with what is a simple way so that somebody can just leave a box somewhere like they would on a on a shelf for a delivery driver to come pick up, and then the airplane can go get it asynchronously. How we figured that out is the autoloaders, those are like sort of starting to enter service now. That, that whole process from I want the thing to I have the thing can be as little as 15 minutes. That's um, crazy. And most of that time is the like pre preparation of the goods. Yeah. You, know, you sort of think about like same day or next day delivery, this is like same hour delivery. People have this interpretation of what they think drone delivery is going to look like. You're going to look up and you see the skies sort like of darkened. Like a fleet of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But really, like you can do a very large operation and look up and very rarely see an airplane. Do you ever use slow mode in the design of the airplanes? Uh, definitely not at the quality that, that you guys do. Um, I think that we would we were very envious of the cameras yeah. that you have. But um, uh, we do some flow visualization stuff. So like, you know, smoke around propellers. Um, we do a lot of uh, like inspection with like, you know, really powerful microscopes and stuff. But I'm sure there's a lot of shots that you guys are going to get that we would have loved to have had years yeah, ago. Yeah, I bet. Well, I took that as a challenge. So I asked if I could take one of the motor and propeller assemblies back to my studio and shoot my own vortex footage. This is a off the shelf three blade propeller. And this is one of the four blade propellers designed by Wing, which is quieter. And uh, it'll be good to see a comparison of how they affect the surrounding air. So we're front lighting with one and back lighting with two as I spin up the propeller and fire some smoke. This is a little smoke machine. So I'll just be off to the side here, making some smoke, trying not to set off the fire alarm. And we'll see how the propeller, there's a little one, little vortices there, look. That's just from my lumbering body moving out of the way. The Phantom is on the bolt. The bolt is holding the camera on its left side. So it's actually this way up to make the most use of all the, the downward air. And we'll start with the off the shelf three blade propeller. Okay, I'm playing back the footage now of the three blade propeller and we'll slow down to 20,000 frames a second. You can see that each vortex produced by each blade of the propeller is pretty uniform. They're all kind of equidistant from each other, slowing down even more now to 50,000 frames a second. This footage 
has blown my mind. We've already seen how fast these propellers spin, but the vortices produced by the tip of each blade is an unreal speed. I've calculated this at over 3,000 rotations per second. That's about 180,000 RPM that some of these smoke loops are rotating in. I'm gonna slow it down again here just because I think it's very easy to see the individual rotation and the same spacing between them. Now we'll move on to the wing-designed four-blade propeller. Now I've immediately noticed that wings custom propellers have asymmetric blade lengths and this seems to cause the vortex to occur at different points so at different heights on this footage and what that means is that occasionally one vortex will swoop underneath another one which is causing inconsistent spacing between these vortices this not only reduces the noise of the propeller but it also changes the noise profile so it spreads out the sound energy across multiple frequencies and that means you're not hearing one individual high-pitched peak it's lesser peaks over a wider range of sound frequencies i think it's incredibly cool to see that concept visualized simply by using smoke and slow-mo Back to California now. I think one of my biggest misconceptions about this shoot day was that delivery drones are something that's going to happen in the future. I had no idea that this company had already made over 400,000 commercial deliveries. So immediately I'm wondering about all the things they would have had to have thought of. Like what happens if someone tries to take down a drone by hanging off the string during a delivery? I actually started off quite reserved and then some of the wing guys were like, oh, you could do better than that. So then I, I really started to yank on it. And you can see the drone noticing that it's no longer left and it's spinning up and down different propellers to keep itself not only level but also in the same spot it was originally in. At the upper limit of being yanked, the drone simply releases the cable and it will just fly back without it. For this experiment, we're going to demonstrate the drone's ability to fly in light to moderate rain. It can also survive in winds up to 20 knots with gusts up to 25. And thankfully, a lovely rain cloud has just come over so we can get some lovely slow-mo shots. <laughs> Immediately here you can see that 2,000 frames a second is pretty cool for the rain but almost useless for the propeller. So we're now at 80,000 and we've basically paused the rain but we can see the detail in the interactions of the propeller blades against each droplet. And as you can see it's having no effect on the drone so let's blast it with some more powerful liquid. Okay I've moved the Phantom closer, we're still at 80,000 frames a second and we're going to add some wind. You can see at this level of rain and wind that it is having to do compensation again. But at the previous levels of rain, the drone didn't seem to struggle that much. But with the added wind and these fat globs, you can actually see the drone compensating for the slowdown on the propellers that are getting hit with wind and rain. But once again, refusing to go down and not even getting moved from its spot in 3D space. In this video, adding a little something special, FPV footage flown by Alex Vanover, drone racing world champion. Who better than that? You work at Wing. I do, <laughs> yeah. I've been at Wing now for a little while and um, enjoying being able to cross over my skills from flying these first person view drones and racing and in filming and now being able to use that here at Wing has been awesome. The cool thing with the FPV drones is it creates another perspective, a unique angle that you couldn't get with a traditional camera. And so I love to push the limits with it and I think that these types of shots are gonna be shots that probably surprise a lot of people that they've never seen before and I just love being able to have the opportunity to be able to create those. We're gonna try and get a shot later on we, where we're gonna drop the drone to see its frangible design and you're gonna just dive the FPV. It's cool every time. Yeah, I think that'll be really cool diving the FPV drone along as we it's essentially intentionally crashed the airplane. I think it's going to be really cool. Before we film the impact into the ground with Adam Savage and crew, I learned a little bit about the construction of the drone from Alex, who you've previously seen having a whale of a time with the leaf blower. Hello, Alex. Hello, Gavin. We're about to drop an aircraft, aren't we? We are, yes. We have uh, here the internal carbon fiber structure that is within our wing delivery drones. And they're designed to be 
frangible. Frangible, yes. So it's a great if, word. So if you haven't checked out Tested's video, uh, frangible means that it's designed to break apart in specific ways, in specific areas. Our drones are meant to be robust under normal flight conditions. They're very strong when they're flying, but in the highly unlikely event of an impact, they're designed to break apart more completely to protect the world around them. But the internal structure that gives it the rigidity is this carbon fiber, and it's held together by these plastic pieces, and these are the ones that are designed to be frangible. Okay, so why don't we get a lovely little close-up here in slow-mo, maybe like 20,000 frames a second, just so I can see what actually happens. Okay, I'm gonna try not to stab my jugular with this carbon fiber. <laughs> okay, ready? Three, two, one. Okay, here it goes. See the strain? Yeah. Uh, look, how, look at the screws fly out. Wow, so it's just the heads. Yeah, the heads pops the off. Yeah, just like it's designed to do. Wow. Oh, uh, there goes no, one. one. Oh, oh, that's oh. pretty simultaneous. Almost, I, yeah, identical. That's interesting that both go. Yeah, kind of at the same time. You would think that one going would relieve the stress on this one, the but I guess one. there's so much pressure that it's it's just jolted off as well. Yeah. That's incredible. And then you can see all the, the stress that was in the carbon fiber. Yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it's vibrating like a guitar string. <laughs> For our final experiment, the wing team will intentionally crash a drone into the ground. And I do need to point out that there are so many safety features before it would come to this final resort. It's so difficult for them to intentionally crash one of these that they built a special dropping rig just so we would know exactly where the impact would be. I'm filming this on both of my cameras and Adam Savage is the man with the button and that classic Mythbusters 321. Are we all good? Here we go, in three, two, one. <laughs> one. Successful <laughs> I can't believe how fast you can move through it. Yeah, it's not like the old days. <laughs> no. Waiting on high speed. Whoa. Waiting on high speed. Yeah, and then boom, let's go. Amazing. This <laughs> was always the best part about doing the show. Yeah. Chimping over the high speed app in the bank. <laughs> okay, here we go. Plane drop in three, two, one. That was it. <laughs> that was cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting the way, because all, all of this styrofoam material is kind of keeping all the stuff that breaks contained. And even when the props fly off, they're still mostly held on by the wires and stuff. So you don't get, you don't actually get a ton of shrapnel. You just get kind of one piece. Here's Alex Vanover back in the zone, getting that FPV dive shot that we talked about earlier. This is at 20,000. 20,000! I just love how these two booms stop dead and then the plane just keeps going. Right, without any preamp. <laughs> like it's like the, all of this part hasn't even noticed yeah. that it's not attached. <laughs> <laughs> so in the very unlikely event that the drone would hit a building at this speed, the frangible design allows it to more uniformly distribute its energy and this would drastically minimize the damage caused to the object. Well, there we have it. Hopefully you enjoyed the slow-mo or learned something interesting about delivery drones. Big old thanks to Wing for inviting me out and sponsoring this video. Make sure you check out their YouTube on the card. It's in the description too. And go and watch the tested video. In addition, after I recorded this ending, I actually visited the tested cave in San Francisco. So be on the lookout for more videos with Adam Savage and me on the tested channel and on our second channel. Thanks for watching.